YouTube, what is up and welcome back to another video. So we already know what's happening in the Pokemon market and I said this for so long and it's just crazy how things you say are actually happening. But we all know about Sword and Shield era of Pokemon cards, how they're just going crazy. Lost Origin, Fusion Strike, Chilling Rain, singles and Evolving Skies especially, singles and the prices of booster boxes are just going crazy. But I've talked about Astro Radiance and other sets in the Sword and Shield era, but today we're going to talk about Silver Tempest. It's really getting slept on. Daddy chill. Brilliant Stars, I feel like it should be a lot more money and Silver Tempest. And this whole video is just gonna be about Silver Tempest and is Silver Tempest what it's cracked up to be? First thing I wanna talk about Silver Tempest, is there a chase card? Because in my own opinion, and again, I'm just a random guy on YouTube, so take my advice with a grain of salt. In my opinion, I think a set has to have a good chase card. For example, Evolving Skies, and that's the most basic thing, and it's easy to speak about things in hindsight, but I think there has to be a chase card like Evolving Skies, like Brilliant Stars, like Chilling Rain. There's always a chase card that would drive the set up in the long run. God damn it, come! You're a goddamn genius! That's the most outstanding answer I've ever heard. You must have a goddamn IQ of 160. Of course, historical things are not what's going to happen in the future. But Silver Tempest, this Lugia V, we all know this card. This is all common sense. The Lugia V is a very, very nice card. I think they could have made this card a lot better. But this card is still a really nice card. I like the colors in this card. I'm more of a dark person. I'm a photographer. If you guys want to follow my IG, you guys could. I'm a very dark person. So this Lugia I like because it is dark. I just don't like how it's kind of flying, but his head's turning back. I don't like that. I think they could have made a way better artwork. Like imagine this Charizard V, but a Lugia kind of format. I think it would look so much better. It is what it is. It's still a very nice card. I'd rather have this card in Japanese. I'm more of a Japanese collector than an English collector, and that sucks because I was an English collector primarily. I would have made a lot more money, especially with Sword and Shield cards going up and up and up. But I do think this Sword and Shield Lugia V Alternate Art is a very, very nice card. I think if you want to invest in this card, I think you will make money. Of course, you have to be patient with buying single cards. I think the sealed product will do a lot better than the single card alone so now let's talk about the set is the set a good set and i think the set is phenomenal this lugia v we already talked about it but this rayquaza i have and i have to grade it and i hope it comes back at psa 10 i think this set is good because it has a lot of chase cards and it has a big variety the reason why i think evolving skies went so crazy and again i'm speaking in hindsight and i'm not trying to compare this set to evolving skies nowhere near but what Evolving Skies has is diversity in the set. With this set, it has a lot of cards that many other collectors will want. For example, there's a lot of gold cards, there's a lot of rainbow cards, there's a lot of trainer gallery cards, there's a lot of popular Pokemon in this set. There's Lugia and there's Rayquaza. And to me, that's pretty popular. And Blaziken, of course. We looked through this set, Rayquaza, I really like this card. I think it's a really nice card. Not a fan of the color palette, but it's a really nice card. I have this card, I hope it's a PSA 10. Okay. The Lugia V-Star, I really do like. Not a big fan of rainbow cards, but this Charizard V-Star and this Lugia V-Star, probably my favorite rainbow cards in Sword and Shield era. Love these cards. These alternate arts aren't really my favorite. I like this Blaziken though. I do like this Blaziken, but this one, I think they really missed. It's like upside down. I just think it's a L. Other than those, this Candice is nice. I know not many people are into trainer cards. This Friends card is a nice card. This Blissey is a nice card. There's a lot of cards that are really nice. This Zero Aura V, I like Zero Aura. This card is really nice. This card is really nice. There's so many cards in this set that are nice. Yes, they're not going to be $500. They're not like the Leafeon VMAX, the Glaceon VMAX, the Umbreon VMAX, the Rayquaza V. It's not like that of course but i think the artwork alone if we're looking at the artworks i think it's a really really good set but they're not going to be worth much like these three top cards i think will drive the set if these three top cards do well i think the set does well other than that i don't think it does very well because i don't think much people are interested in these cards and i don't think they're going to carry a high premium to them but overall the average set is a very very nice set and i think we all can agree on silver tempest I think people are bored of Silver Tempest, but I just want to look three, five years out. People are going to want this set in their collection, and to buy a steel product right now when it's MSRP, I think it's a good price to buy it. So that's what the next thing we're going to talk about. 
Okay, so the next thing is price. Because obviously, just because something is nice and something is exciting, what comes down to it is what you pay for it. If you overpay for something, odds are you're probably not gonna do very well. If you underpay, odds are you're probably going to do well. Even if a set is like Rebel Clash, if you bought that set for like $100, you did very well for yourself. With Battle Styles, it's very cheap right now. That's why I'm saying on this channel, I think Battle Styles right now, it's not the greatest set, but I think for right now, on what it is and what the value brings, it's cheap enough to buy and it'll be a good investment in my opinion. Nice. Silver Tempest, what's the price? MSRP, really, you can buy this on Pokemon Center website. I don't think you take much risk buying Silver Tempest right now because of everything we already talked about in today's video, personally, I like Silver Tempest. I like the Lugia, I like the Rayquaza, I like the Blazikins. So if I have to pay MSRP for this set, it's no brainer in my opinion because I think there's not much risk. Look back at historical data. You buy a booster box for MSRP, odds are you're probably gonna make money. If it's a set like this, it's a good set. People are gonna want it. There's always gonna be a demand for it. If you just look at the Lugia V, look how the price is going up. And imagine when this set is out of print run. Imagine three, five years when Sword and Shield is nowhere in stock <clears throat> in local card stores or on the Pokemon website, things like that. Over time, this will run, and I think with all Sword and Shield era, it's easy money in my opinion. But with Silver Tempest, right now, because it's just about two years old, I don't see it being in stock for much longer. And if you had to ask me to buy Silver Tempest, I would say yes. So let me know if you guys like today's video. Let me know if you're buying Silver Tempest. I am gonna buy Silver Tempest probably next week because I think I wanna buy this sooner than later because I don't think it'll be in stock for much more. Could be terribly wrong, I'm no insider trader and I don't know what's happening in the Pokemon company, but just my speculation, I don't think it's gonna be in stock for much longer. So that's why I plan on to aggressively buy Silver Tempest and Brilliant Stars at the moment. So let me know what you guys are doing in the Pokemon market. Are you guys buying the set or not? I definitely am, and uh, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Deuces.